Hello everyone and welcome to part two of this lockdown interview. If you missed the first part, you can click in the caption. So the following year you went to your first Tour de France and you finished fourth in the final time trial. What, how is it riding the Giro compared to the Tour, compared to the Vuelta? Like, can you notice a lot in the fans, in the style of riding or racing? Uh, maybe the Tour... I would say the tour is more because it's, it's it's the race number one. For me, the tour was much, let's say, much more unsecure and dangerous in every stage, even on the flat, easy stage. I mean, not even before the final, but everywhere because all the guys were getting the same information: stay in the front, stay in the front, stay in the front. And when 200 guys, they have the same information from the team directors to stay in the top 20. So 180 guys is behind these top 20, you know. And that's why it was more dangerous. And the, like the first weeks were the, like always the crashes and everything. That's what I've noticed. The main thing was uh, it was this. And, and then we as a not French team... We didn't feel any other things from us inside. Anyway, we were we are professionals. We come there to do the job, and the team wasn't going crazy. I mean, the team management wasn't going much more crazy because it's the Tour de France than the Giro. So it was the normal race, except that the bunch was, you know, a bit more dangerous. But I was doing lots of work for the Tour for the sprints. I was pulling the first week. Uh, well, yeah, almost every second day or every day in the front to catch the breakaways. So I didn't feel so, I felt less of these dangerous things behind me. What was it like? Well, you won the individual national time trial championships again. Uh, what was it like the following year to go to Movie Star? What was that kind of the change of going from, well, Cervelo to a Spanish team? That was actually that big change that uh, I wasn't even dreaming about it, you know. I don't say a bad change, but um, it's like, you know, coming from Cervelo was everything, uh, it was like we say German, Swiss German rules, you know. 10 a.m. is 10 a.m. It's not 5 past 10. If well, they say that we, you know, in, let's say in September, you know exactly the dates and almost the flights when you will go to your first training camp uh, or like second training camp in January, you know. So you know everything like two months in advance, you know all the program, everything, the material, the like I told you, the osteopaths and the, everything, the structure was working, you know, like, like a Swiss clock, you know, clack, 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 always. And there you come and like, you know, Spanish style. If I would go there now, I would enjoy much more than in 2011. And there is no everything. Ah, what time we go to training? You know, yeah, 10 o'clock. You know, you come there 9:40 because I'm used to. You know, I come 20 minutes before just in case to check my bike. You know, the ride the day before the race. And I go there, I and I'm ready. I see the 10 o'clock, okay, we'll leave soon. And then I see the other guys just going out of the breakfast hall with the normal clothing. Oh, 10 o'clock, okay, we go to the, our room, then we change, then we go for a ride. So that was, you know, no stress, everything completely different. So I had, like, for me, it was like a half year to, to get used to that, you know, to these things. But uh, the atmosphere and everything was really good in the movie star. The guys, the the staff, even today, I speak. I have lots of friends in the peloton from the movie star times. What was kind of your role in movie star? They didn't really, well, they're not really seen as a sprint team. Yeah, exactly. And the movie star it wasn't the best team for me at that time because, uh, yeah, in general. It was me who f***ed up a little bit the situation. I mean, it was not on purpose, but somehow, since then, since the end of 2010 and beginning 11, I didn't do 
any more good time trials, you know. And even until today, I don't know what happened. It just, or I, I don't know, overheat the engine or or doing the two Grand Tours uh, in 2010 with the Giro and Tour. Uh, maybe there was too much. I don't know what happened or whatever. But since then, since 2011, I didn't do any more good time trials. And the movie star, they sent me as a good time trialist, what they like a lot. You know, Unzue, he, he, li- he likes the good time trialers because they can ride uh, long and fast to work for the team leaders in the mountains, you know, or before the mountains, and they can win the time trials. They can be good in team time trials. So everything for the GC, it's perfect. You know? But then, as I didn't do good in the time trials, so I was even mentally, I was a bit lost, you know. It was it was actually the hardest years of my career. It was the years of the movie star. So after movie star, you went to MTN Quebec. What was that shift like? That was actually I was really enjoying being there because it was completely different, and I think it was the team that I needed for that moment because it was a new team doing a step up coming from the continental team to the pro quality, uh, African team, let's say we had less, much less of stress, you know, everything what we did, we had to do was already good because it was a new team with lots of African riders and, and we were only five or six Europeans, if I remember good. So it was less stress, you know. It was a bit more relaxed at the beginning, and we did a nice training camp in Johannesburg, around Johannesburg, uh, traveling to Africa, you know, and enjoying a little bit different things. So, from that side, it was a very nice team. And then uh, the year that I really want to speak about, which is 2015, when you cycled again for the Marseille team. Well, Marseille, um, yeah. you the full the full French calendar almost. Uh, what was that year like for a French continental team in such a kind of packed calendar in France? Yeah, that was actually one of the best years, you know, for me. Because uh, if we look from the, let's say from the movie star, my results, my career, my everything like went like, you know, little by little like down, you know. Even if MTN Quebec, I was feeling better and better again. But then some circumstances at the end of the year of 2014, I wasn't, uh, they didn't, let's say, leave me in the team. So I had to leave the team. And I was planning to stay. And it was very late. It was the end of September when they announced me that they actually, they don't keep me. I had to look for the new team. And I, I wasn't a big rider. Even today, I'm not a big rider. You know, I need to have uh, I don't know some time to find a team. And I realized that I'm in a little bit like shitty situation that I need to find a team if I want to continue. And I knew that I want to continue. That's why I called the manager of my amateur team when I was in La Pomme Marseille in 2006, 2007, where I started my career. And uh, I called him, I said, look, is there any place in the continental team that you are, you have, you are owning now? He confirmed me, yes. So I joined it. I knew that I'm coming to the continental team with a low budget the travels and everything. But I could still live in our second residence in Spain. And with the, our deal was that I can take a flights and everything. And uh, I was ready mentally that it's going to be hard. It's going to be much less of comfort. It's going to be shit hotels, maybe shit food and things like that. But I said, I will, if I want to continue doing cycling, I need to enjoy that. And I really enjoyed that. We had such a nice group of riders. We were like a family because uh, because of the um, economical side. I was, let's say, leaving for the weekend of races. Let's say Friday, I am in the racing place. I Saturday, Sunday, I do some one-day races. And then on Thursday, there is another uh, stage race starting. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we as a team, we spend in some company, the cheapest company you can find in France. 
you know, to, to stay there, not to travel home. And especially when the summer was getting there, we were sending our masseurs to buy some food and salad. And we were doing the picnics in the midday in the garden of the of the company and things like that, you know. So uh, we enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much. And also we as a team, we we did some really good results. I won the races and I came back. So even if it wasn't, uh, you know, Madrid, Madrid Real or the football, but I enjoy yeah. it so much. What I up in the four days of Dunkirk that year. So the four days of Dunkirk is a HC race. So there were world tour teams there and you're riding for a continental team. Yeah, I actually, I had very, very good legs. This, uh, this, the, that Dunkirk. Since the first day, first day, first stage was on cobbles. So I came third, so I had then I had motivation, and then the the queen stage of the Cassel climb on the cobbles. I was just going, 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 and I saw others getting dropped and dropped, and then I realized that oh, I can do top three. Well, then I realized if I stay there, I do top. I will be second, and then on the last climb, Cockhart he dropped, and then I won. But uh, all this happened also to the teamwork that we organized, and I had a big support from from our small team. I was also a guy from the small team, and I had a big support, and they all helped me a lot. So that's why actually I managed to win it. Back of that really successful season you had, you got a contract with FDJ. What was the Milano San Remo like that year for you? That was crazy. That was crazy because uh, you know, with all the with all the situation with the crash and everything, he's coming back, and uh, we all wait for him. Then we work, and everything happened that that we always in this Milan San Remo when he crashed, we always had the guys in front, small groups in front, that were able to do this push to close the gap for him to come back to the front, you know, and everything worked perfectly after his crash and I remember I just finished my work I I closed the last gap I had I could then I just rode in and then I hear in the radio no way he won and then like if you asked me before about my victory victory in 2009 in the Giro and the victory of Arnaud de Mar in Milan San Remo so I was feeling that it was me who won 10 stages of the Giro at that moment compared to what I was feeling, you know, actually in 2009. It was crazy. Emotions over top. Quite interesting to hear that you took more satisfaction in Demar winning than your own Giro win. Has your role been just working for Demar basically for all the years that you've been doing FD, writing for FTJ, now Groupama FTJ? So my role is uh, I always with him. In the, in the group with him, sometimes it can change, but mostly 80% of the races I'm doing with him. And my role is always, uh, it always depends on the parkour of my shape and of the sprint uh, train guys that we have with us. If he's having like full sprint, sprint train guys with him, like uh, Jacopo is there and Ramon is there. And if sometimes there is a uh, Stefan Kung that doing some races with us, and if he say, okay, I can guys pull for you. So then my role is much earlier. Sometimes if I'm not in a good shape in the beginning of the year, I mean, I even like to go and to pull, to close the gaps. I mean, to pull for the breakaways like this, I, 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 I get in the shape better. And I'm not that stressed in the final because I'm not very fast guy. Well, I'm not fast guy at all. I have to say, have to say true. I can ride fast, but if I got the speed, I cannot slow down and and to, to come back to that speed anymore. You know, and I have only one one gear, and then and I can put that gear only once. So then it depends. If there is like critical point, a three k's to go with the roundabout, or we turn left and there is narrow road, so that's where my job is. Usually it's that. So in 2017, you also did the, basically the full cobblestone classic season. Uh, do you like the cobbles? Is it something that you kind of feel you, you're good at? I like the cobbles, yes. But I am not good in positioning. 
I'm not good in the position because I cannot find that shape in the springtime to be explosive, you know, I mean, because there you need to be still, you need to be a little explosive to be able, you know, to do the 15 seconds, the last jump before the corner. And I can be in the front, in the front, in the front. And then like, you know, 100 meters to the corner, I am top 20. In the corner, I am top 80, you know, and like every time like this. And then after time, sometimes you say, I just fuck it, you know. And then one time you close the gap, other time you close the gap, and then you just tire it. But the Cobalt in general, like I like Paris Roubaix more than the Belgium classics. I did some okay results, you know, coming with a strong group in the Belgium races. But it was like two times E3 and and once I did top 14 the Flanders, you know. So that's yeah. basically it. E3, you were 18th? Yeah, two times 18. Uh, like, like second last guy from the from the bunch. So it was like always 20 guys or 19 guys coming to the sprint, you know. So in 2017, we have spoke about that you've won the Lithuanian National TT Championships multiple times. But in 2017 was actually the first time you did the double. So you did, won the road race as well. Uh, was the road race something you'd been targeting every single year? And then finally you won it in 2017. Yeah, so as I was talking about me and my strong and... Uh and weak points so my weakest point is the sprint and in general the yeah the acceleration you know and uh, if there is two guys coming to the sprint i know that i'll be second wherever i'm coming with you know okay sometimes it can happen that the other guys he can puncture before the finish line you know so and every time when we're coming two or three guys i was always you know if we were coming three at the best i was second you know if we're coming four sometimes i was third and uh, that's why I always had to, I knew if I want to win the nationals, I had to come alone. And this year it was a very nice parkour because it was a short, like one, a bit more than one kilometer cobbled climb they found in Lithuania. And that what actually saved me and gave me the jersey because I accelerated on the last lap and I, I, I managed to leave all the Rahan guys behind me and then I just rode away quite easily afterwards. But every year, every time there was that situation that I couldn't do that jump to have a five seconds gap, at least, you know, then I could, I knew that I can, if I am in good shape, I can ride away. But that was the only year that I managed to do that. So what was it like going to the Tour de France that year, being national champion of Lithuania? Amazing, because that was also one of the dreams I was, you know, going for since many, since long time. And then wearing the national jersey on my chest, you know, with that one of the most beautiful time trials, uh, sorry, one of the most beautiful national champion jerseys I ever had. And we were going to the biggest race of the history of cycling. So what else would you like, you know, like only winning a stage, maybe. <laughs> All right, just finishing up, last question. Uh, who was your hero when you were growing up, cycling-wise? Yeah, uh, I didn't have my heroes actually. I was, um, I was when I was growing up, I was not even following the cycling actually. I just started to follow the cycling, what's happening in the Tour de France and everything when I was whatever, 17, 18, maybe you know, when I was already grown up almost. Only then I started to look, okay, who who won the Tour de France and things like that. But I never had a big, big idol, but just because in the sports center where I started to train, there was a few postcards, a big postcards of Miguel Indurain. So that's why I had him like more often as my preferred rider, you know, because I just remember one day my father, he brought me there. And he said, I do know who is it. I said, no. And he said, yeah, it's Miguel and Ryan, five times winner of the Tour de France. Ah, oh, okay. So that's why he was kind of him. And uh, I like him also because he was tall and he was good in time trials, you know. And I'm tall, so I was good in time trials. So maybe that's the only guy that I could say I was a little bit looking at. 
but he was not racing anymore. All right. Thanks very much for that. Very interesting interview. And we'll look out for you in the World Tour, uh, riding for FTJ, Rupama. Rupama FTJ. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Thank you. That. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it as interesting as I did listening to Ignatas Konovalovic's career. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to check out the playlist of the other lockdown interviews that I did before. And with that, thank you for watching and see you next time.